Mary Me, Annie here. Welcome back to Tarot Together. Our subject for this discussion is the care and feeding of our tarot decks. Another area, simple as it may be, where what we share with each other of our experiences with working with our own decks will be a wonderful way to help each other and inspire each other. And especially if someone's opinion doesn't match mine and experience doesn't match mine, that conversation is welcome below and on our Facebook group. So, brand new deck, right out of the box. First question we consider is, do we have to cleanse them? And by that we're talking about energetically cleansing them. Disconnecting them from existing energy, bonding our own energy to them. Why would cards out of the box need to be considered for this kind of cleansing? Well, they're kind of cold from the box, is how I look at it. They tend to be, when they're new, to be without energy because they haven't been connected to any sources or inputs of that energy. More often than not, that's what I find out of the box. They feel cold. They don't feel like they have life yet. They could also come with energy, either that feels unwelcome or uncomfortable, or just the fact that it comes with an energy that's not connected to us and our intent for our deck. I do believe, new from the box, we want to connect with our tarot cards from a place of nothingness where there isn't a given already where we come to recognize the deck and in turn and those of you who've worked with tarot for a while know this feeling the deck recognizes us so some sense of taking the deck down to the place of zero the beginning place is important so a new deck Oh, we see, and we read, and we hear all kinds of simple and convoluted rituals we might use to cleanse a new deck. Full moon, broad sunlight, using incense, aspurging, sprinkling with holy water, using certain gems or certain herbs, letting them sit out for a certain length of time, on and on. I I have not felt the need for that kind of cleansing. For me, whether a deck is new and feels cold, or whether it's in my hands and it feels like it's come with previous energy, overflow energy, even if it's energy from a last reading I used with a deck that's not new, but it's the deck I use all the time. As I said, I want to get down to that, that place of zero. To me, it is I guess I'll say it's a touchy-feely thing that is the cleansing energy I prefer to work with. And that's the bond of me and my cards. If it's new out of the deck, the first thing is I want to look at every single card. One by one, just go through the deck. Familiarize myself with that energetic flow and feeling of the deck. And then I like to shuffle it for the first time. And if your intent as you shuffle is to have it be about you and those cards, you cleanse it as you go along. Now I'm not saying don't take on some ritual, simple or sophisticated, because you might feel called to do that. I'm saying that for me, working with and handling the cards does it. New deck. Look at each card is what I do. Spend time with each one. Shuffle it for the first time. Again, as I'm shuffling, I am thinking of my relationship with it. My promise to the deck. My energetic connection to the deck. And then, I don't know if this is an Annie quirk. How many of you might do this? I've met a couple who have, but not many. I put the cards back in order. I always leave a tidy house. Whether it's a new deck, that I acquaint myself with, I hold, I shuffle, and then I put it back in order. It's also the way I cleanse a deck 
after a reading, even a single card reading. I always put my cards to rest back in order. So you could say that's my ritual, and it takes some time, so I'm not going to knock anybody who has a long and sophisticated ritual for their card cleansing. I also leave my cards on my altar. It might be a card or two that's a draw that's on my altar for meditation, but the rest of the cards stay on my altar. My altar is designed to be a grounding place and energy, residual energy from the card settles nicely into it. That's how I handle cleansing. When I look at cleansing in the sense of picking up my tarot cards, I think of the ties that bind, what connects me to the cards and the cards to me. I also think of the times when the ties have to be severed. The ties that severed, when there has to be an energetic disconnect from the cards. For me, every time I use them, there is that moment of severance where I shuffle them back together when I'm done, and then I put them in order. So consideration for yourself when you take up your cards. An act that brings you together with the cards, and an act when you're done working with them that gives you that bit of distance back. I will look forward to your thoughts on cleansing the energy of your cards. The only time I come close to that ritualistic cleansing of the cards is on my full moon rituals, when I do, in my private rites, a draw for myself. The deck ends up sitting underneath Sophia, the crystal wall that I showed you in the previous video, and then is left on the altar until the next time I pick up the cards to use them. Personally. I never felt the need to take it outside in the moonlight to bless it with incense or spurge it with holy water. I've never felt that need. To me, it's been more intimate. My personal connection to the cards, which creates the bond, eliminates previous energy, and intentionally disconnects the energies from the cards after a reading. I called this video the care and feeding. Because it goes beyond just cleansing energetically the cards. It also has to do with the treatment of the cards, per se, as a living, breathing entity. You might not feel like that as you begin working with your cards, but I can promise you it will become that kind of relationship for you. Sometimes, those of us who read tarot, sit with our cards and shuffle them, never do a draw or reading. Just being with them takes us someplace. But they exist in the physical world. They need to be cared for. Think, what kind of shuffling will you use for your deck? Decks aren't made to last forever. Unfortunately, most decks nowadays aren't of the best quality. Even if the deck is historical, they're printed in a rather carefree, modern way, not with the care that would have gone into the expense of printing in the old days. Not always the best of quality. Think when they come out of the box for the first time. You probably want to shuffle them. The old-fashioned shuffle one into the other with both your hands because you do want to bend the cards to begin with to help them become more supple in your hand. But would you want to continue doing that, constantly bending them? Or would you change your shuffling style to drop the cards into each other as a shuffle so as not to bend them and break the surface tension on them? A lot of people like to shuffle, spreading the cards out, literally just putting them down and mushing them around on a table. It does two things. It gives you reversals automatically if you're someone who's looking for reversals. And it's also a way of shuffling that's very... It feels good when you do it, but that kind of shuffling, a lot of wear and tear to the surface of your cards. So you're going to want to try to see what works for you in consideration of truly using a soft touch handling your cards. 
interesting thing to consider. Physically cleaning our cards. I haven't had to clean my cards very often. But there have been times when they've been around resinous incense. There's been times when ash has fallen on them. Or I've had oil, say, on my hands because of a ritual I'm doing or working I'm doing. And my cards actually get soiled. Sometimes soiling of the cards makes them more difficult to shuffle. More wear and tear on them then. Sometimes. The cards are, have you ever had this happen? They come out of the box stuck in one big glump of static electricity and they stay that way when you try and shuffle them. There is sometimes a reason to consider physically cleaning your card. Stop and think about it though. We wouldn't want to clean our cards because the edges get dirty or there's just a worn kind of patina to the card itself. That's our relationship with the card. But we're talking about when something about the housekeeping and tending, the care and feeding of our cards, means they're not their best. They've been altered because they're somehow physically dirty or untidy. The first and most important thing I can tell you is wash your hands before you use your cards. Don't wash your hands and put softening on them or oil on them. That will uh, then make them greasy and they'll attract everything that comes along. It kind of dulls the energy of them down. But <laughs> stop and think before you pick up your cards and wash your hands. It gets the natural oil off your hands and it, it will help prolong the longevity of your cards. Plus the more oil from you that's on your cards, the more it will attract dust and dirt and things that are not of you. So simple housekeeping is Develop the habit of washing your hands before you handle your cards. But there are times when you might be faced with that staticky bunch of cards that simply won't shuffle. Or trying to draw them, they stick together. I've only had that happen a couple of times, and what worked for me was to fan the cards and let them sit. Walk away from them, let them sit, and the static would tend to go into the air. I do find where we live now. Mobile homes have hot forced air heat, so when the heater comes on in this house, it's like you're inside a jet engine <laughs> with air and dry heat. So I do have a little problem with static sometimes in the winter. And what I did is, I'd read someplace about using dryer sheets that you put in the dryer when you dry your clothes and rubbing them on lightly. Used dryer sheets, by the way, not new ones. Then you'd put gunk on your cart rubbing them on the cards, and I found that it worked. I gotta tell you though, I wouldn't be caught dead using dryer sheets. Not something that would ever be in this house. But I have asked neighbors for their old <laughs> dryer sheet. I'm not above doing that. I have to say, it worked wonderfully. What works best for me, when I've had the experience of a deck that's just like that, and it works well too with a deck that just seems to have picked up enough oils from your hand who knows, smoke from your candles or your incense, something that impacts the surface of it, either to be staticky or sticky. There's lots of powdery substances that you'll read can be used to, in a way, dull down the surface patina of your cards. I've read talcum powder. I don't like the idea of talcum powder. There's some things in talcum powder mineral speaking that I think would actually scratch the surface. I have heard of the use, and in fact, a long time ago I tried it. There's something called fanning powder, which is used by magicians to powder their cards so that the slate of hand works very well because the cards move very, very well. I tried that because I think my first teacher, if I remember correctly, used fanning powder, and I found out that I was violently allergic to it. So if you are considering purchasing fanning powder, there wasn't any information on it back in those days. She bought it from some kind of magic shop. Now there's a lot more information out that fanning powder does have some toxic chemicals in it. It doesn't mean if you use it you're going to get sick, but it's not the best thing to use. I'll tell you what works the best for me. Uh, bag of some kind with flour 
yeah, baking flour in it. And I put cards in a couple at a time and just shake them up. Shake them up. Do it until I go through the entire deck. And then clean each of the cards individually. When I was first learning to do it that way, the suggestion was to use a washcloth that we would use because at the time it was that probably was one of the softest cloths that most of us could get our hands on. However, I found that nowadays the microfiber cloths that are available, sometimes very inexpensively, are great at doing the nice buffing on the cards. Really good at knocking back static. Really good at your cards get like a sticky feeling in your hand and or they're not shuffling easy. The design of some cards, the surface that they put on them. This flower works really, really good. You do need to be very careful and clean them well when you're done. It's very time consuming actually, but it works well. What do you do if you have a serious dirty card or cards? I've done a couple of things that worked well. For moderate soiled cards which has happened to me mostly, I'm thinking, when I've done some readings outside, or weather impacted the cards, or just have particularly messy working, full of incense ash and stuff that got on my cards, if there's actual smudges or things. First thing, stop to consider, are they welcome? They are a sign of wear and tear. They're beautiful, in a way. They have to do with your relationship to the card. But if they're impacting the card, the way it shuffles, the thing I've almost always used with no problem at all is a gum eraser, an art gum eraser. So this is not the big pink rubber eraser we use as children. This is an eraser I think that they're used for things like charcoal and pencil drawings and things like that. They're very very soft and they don't do damage to the card and a light rubbing of that over a soiled area will clean the card. And I remember, I've not had to do this, but I remember my teacher had an instance, I cannot remember what it was that got on her card, so that she needed to do this. But she needed to do a serious cleaning, physical cleaning of the cards. And she used spirit of camphor and a soft cloth and wiped the cards gently. And the important thing, of course, is dried them completely. Again, a long process, but it saved the card. Why you want to think about this when it comes to your cards is the, the durability, the length of your cards, how long their life is going to be. It's a heartbreaker if you wear out a deck. The beloved cards. You're literally going to have to bury a friend. You're going to lose somebody very important in your life. But with proper care, your cards can last a long, long time. And with the quality of most cards, the actual physical care of them is actually important. How about how we store our cards? Well, there's always the velvet bag or the silk bag that we slip them into. Nothing wrong with that. I do suggest if you're somebody who stores your cards that you work with all the time in a bag, make sure there is room, there is air in the bag. Don't pull that little thing closed at the top. And that's how you're going to create humidity within them, where the material will leach out the dampness. It can be one of two extremes according to the temperature around the cards, the humidity in the area around them. You end up with staticky cards or cards that are sticky. So make sure you aren't jamming your cards into a bag they just fit into. And don't tie it up so tight that you are literally and energetically smothering your cards. Think of that. Keeping them in a tarot tomb or a tarot crypt. It's also an idea that's a box made for them. The thing you want to be careful with, with that is how you place them in and take them out. Wear and tear on the cards. There's also the possibility of keeping cards in the box they came in. We don't need to have cards that we bought for the artwork that we don't handle and use day to day for reading. Well, they don't need to be in some kind of a container. The box they came in was probably a stunning part of the packaging and artwork around them. Nothing wrong with keeping them in a box that they came in. I prefer with a deck that I work with all the time for myself. Not to put it in a bag, or to put it in a box, the one it came in, or some kind of a box made for tarot cards. I prefer to wrap my cards up in the cloth that I use when I 
lay it down on the surface to prepare for my readings to keep that bond with the cards to let the cloth ground the energy of the cards even though I will have put them back in mortar and done my little rituals the material that you read on takes on a life of its own too whatever you use on the surface where you lay your cards that is another part of the housekeeping by the way you don't just lay down something on your surface before you use your cards for an energetic purpose or that mind purpose of setting that space aside for your workings you also do it for housekeeping it's more gentle on the cards after I've done my little ritual where I reshuffle and then put the cards back in order and I'm done with them I wrap them up in the material I use to do my readings on there's my thoughts notice there was far more thoughts about the physical care and feeding of my cards and there was the cleansing energetically of the cards because I have a cut and dry way of doing that that works for me my physical bond to the cards and my habit of shuffling at the end of a draw and then putting the cards back in order and wrapping them up in my cloth and then laying them on my altar but as much as that's my way I bet every one of you has your own way if you've been working with tarot for a while so your comments below and on the Facebook group are extremely welcome remember a lot of people watching this series are new to tarot and I don't profess to be a tarot expert the whole purpose of the series is for our sharing so below or on the Facebook always linked at the end of the video and in the text box below what do you think about that brand new deck of cards how you got it gift used new what's your experience of that been what do you do with it when you first take it out of its box to prepare the working relationship between you and it is there something you do regularly going forward after that and then What's your experience of the physical care and feeding of your cards? Do you have suggestions for us along those lines from your experience? Mary Part, 